yet, come on! Well, after a fortnight away, Premier League football is back and striding out here on the south coast are Bournemouth and Hull City. Two clubs who spent many years in the lower leagues of English football. Now they meet for the first time on the biggest stage in the land. Bournemouth hoping to pick up from where they left off two weeks ago when their campaign really appeared to be getting going. Hull may be in search of a fresh start. Some of the off-the-pitch uncertainty has may have been answered with the appointments of Mike Feardham as their new permanent head boss this week. Well, let's have a check on the team news for you. Bournemouth are unchanged in their draw away at Watford two weeks ago. There was some concern over the fitness of Harry Arter, but he is good to go once again today. Jack Wilshere and Jordan Iber both yet to play the full 90 minutes so far this campaign. Callum Wilson starts up front and Tyro Mings is amongst those on the bench after his long spell out due to injury. Well, it's a landmark day for Steve Cook. This is his 200th game for Bournemouth, a man who was signed for just £200,000 from Brighton five years ago. Callum Wilson leads the attack for the home team once again today. He's been in good form over the past few weeks. He's scored in two of his last three starts in the Premier League. Up front for Hull City is Will Keane, who starts his first ever match in this division. The man who was signed a few months ago for one million pounds from Manchester United. Refer to Abel Hernandez up front for Hull today. And also full top flight debut for Harry Maguire, who will play in defence along with Curtis Davis. That means that Jake Livermore will push back into his more usual midfield position and he'll play there for the first time this season. Well, there is Mike Feather. He's nearly 20 years Eddie Howe's senior. Now given the chance to be a full-time boss for the very first time. Hull do have a good record here on the South Coast. They are hoping to continue that today. Last match here nearly 20 years ago was a 4-0 success for Hull City. Bournemouth have won their last two games here on the bounce. The last outing was that draw and Watford, they've been in good form up until the international break. And Jack Wilshere and Co. Still all three points for the Cherries here on their home patch once again today. So we're all set to go here. And it will be Bournemouth who will get the match underway. And Jack Wilshere is the man who stands over this kickoff. The man who is on loan here, of course, from Arsenal. And the man who really caught the eye at Watford two weeks ago. It is a first ever top flight meeting between these two sides. They've now met in all four divisions of English football. Second year in the big time for Bournemouth, the fifth campaign at this level for Hull City. And we think once again, survival is the aim for both. Hull City wearing their fetching third kick for the first time here, this very vibrant purple or pink. And here's Ahmed El Mohamedi. With the hit ball in by him, easy take for Arta Boric, and watching with me here is Tony Gale. Well, it's interesting to see how they set up. More or less the same, Joe, 4-3-3, both teams. So, individual battles, obviously, all over the park to be won. But we're anticipating a lot of possession for Bournemouth. But just a question of how far up the pitch that Hull try and do their press. Maybe put them under a little bit of pressure. But it looks like Lucas is probably going to try and pick up Jack Wilshere in that advanced role. I think that's going to be a key. Here's Jake Livermore for Hull. That's a loose pass by him. Jordan I for Bournemouth will drive at El Mohamedi. And he's still going on here. Wilshere was there, i still. Now it's Daniels. He caught that with some power. Lots away by El Mohamedi. And a very purposeful start here from Bournemouth. Steve Cook. No danger there for David Marshall, but Bournemouth here starting like they mean business, Tony. Well, that was a great opportunity. Jordan Ive couldn't get his shot away. I maybe thought he should have let this roll to Jack Wilshere just about here as he's just waiting to pull the trigger, but ends up slicing it to Charlie Daniels, and he's trying to hit across it. 
They hit it straight at the defender. Bright start from Bournemouth and they can't let Jordan Ive run from those deep positions. They're going to meet him further up the park. And it has blown perhaps hot and cold since he signed Jordan Ive for that club record fee of £15 million. Pounds. Here's Will Keane for Hull. Snapping away though in typical tenacious fashion there was Harry Arter. Nice play by Daniels. Andrew Sermon. Here's Arter. Dispossessed by Ryan Mason. Chance to try and fall for him, but the heavy touch allows Simon Francis to win it back. Junior Stanislas, who scored the winning goal in the last home game here. The 1 0 win over Everton a few weeks ago. Adam Smith. Now Sermon, one of eight players in this Bournemouth team to start every match in the league so far this campaign. A very consistent team here for Eddie Howe. Make a fairly slow start this year, but before the international break, he did click into gear. He's going to be key in that midfield area, getting the ball to Jack Wilshere. Barry Arter and Sermon have got to deliver it quickly. Here's Ibe, Wilshere, Ibe again, back for Jack Wilshere on his weaker right side. Here's Sermon. It's a couple of times, Joe, isn't it, early on, Jordan Ibe now, Jack Wilshere just not wanting to get that shot away. Smith, that's going to be a free kick in a promising area. Adam Smith there went searching on and was brought down. Walked down by Mason, I think, he just tried to come inside. Just a little clip, wasn't there? Really quick start from Bournemouth. Important that they started brightly. I was here against Everton a few weeks ago. They started in exactly the same manner. Sermon and Stanislas are the two men here who fancy this for Bournemouth. First set piece chance for Hull City. contend with here. Their defence has been a bit weak in recent weeks. No clean sheet so far for David Marshall since he forced his way into the team here, replacing Eldon Jakubovic. Stanislas with the free kick. So unlucky, it's been turned in by Daniels. It is a wonderful start here for Bournemouth. Right from the word go, they have been right at Hull City. And it's Charlie Daniels who makes the breakthrough. Well, it looks like the keeper thought this one was going wide, Joe, because he's kind of let it hit the post. It's a great strike from Stanislas, comes off the post, and that's a great volley from Charlie Daniels. Great technique. Really hits down and through the ball, straight in the middle of the goal. Super free kick, super follow-up from Daniels. Watch the keeper, he kind of thinks that's going wide, pulls his arms away, hits the post, and they're first to the rebound. Dangerous game to play, I think you're better off saving it and then uh, worrying about it afterwards, but maybe looked like he could have got a hand to that. Well, delights for Bournemouth and for Daniels, his first goal this season. The man who was the player's player of the year here last year. And Bournemouth, good value for the lead here, it's come early. But right from the word go, they were right on the money here and Hunter being caught cold. It was great technique on the volley as well. It looked an easy take, but it wasn't. Super technique. There's Harry Maguire's ball forward for Hull. Oh, just not got going here. Remember, they come into this match having lost their last three games in a row in the Premier League. Mason. Here's Andy Robertson. Livermore. And Maguire. But Lucas. Mason. Klukas. Nice passing here by Hull City. Mason. Got the shot away. He's behind for a goal kick. Uh, good play from Ryan Mason. Just playing and just following his, his run as he played the ball in. But final shot wasn't the best. That's what they've got to do, get a few 
passes together, maybe get their confidence going. Well, after 83 days as the caretaker, Mike Fielder's reign as the permanent head coach. That's got off to a terrible start here. It's a contract he signed until the end of the season. Hoping that stability in terms of his position will help Hull push on now and try and climb the table once again. They have to come from behind here very early on today. Al Mohamedy, it's a nice ball in by him, flicked away by Francis. And Stanislas should clear here with the help of Adam Smith. Wilson. Livermore for Hull. Now Mason. Will Keane. Will Keane with that striking burst. Jim Mercy and Bacani came back from international duty with a slight knock, so he has not travelled today. Adel Hernandez, who was away playing for Uruguay in two World Cup qualifiers, seemed to be not fully fit, so he's on the bench from the start here. Now Mohamedy. Given away by Livermore, not for the first time in these early stages here by him. Play at centre back in all the first seven games this season because of the shortage of fit central defenders. He's back in his more familiar midfield role today. Hi, Harry Arter. Here's Francis, the captain. Steve Cook. Francis. Cook having to go back to Arthur Boric. He was away on duty with Podon last week in their World Cup qualifiers. To play there by Smith. Did well to evade the attentions there to Sean Maloney. Seven. Just struggling at the moment, Bournemouth, I think, Joe. Just trying to get the ball to Jack Wilshere. He's sitting in that hole in front, but they can't get in between the lines. This is where I think that maybe they can have a little bit of rotation. He drops a bit deeper to get the ball. You need to get your best players on the ball. You've had a great start, but still need to get him on that ball. He's had very few touches at the moment. Daniels in pursuit here, but he won't get there in time to catch that one. Well, I just feel that the goalkeeper, May Marshall, could have done a bit better with this goal, Joe. Sure, it's a great free kick, big curl on it, but look at him pull his hands away here. Pulls his hands away, and Daniel's on the follow-up with a great bit of technique. Just maybe thought that was going wide, look, and so surprised it comes off the post, and Daniel's puts it away. And here's Sermon for Borman, buoyed by that terrific start. So many goalkeeping error played a part in it. That was a fabulous finish there by Daniels on the volley. Klukas. Maguire. Curtis Davis. Here's Mason. Hull have come from behind to win twice in the EFL Cup so far this season. Here's Callum Wilson for Bournemouth. Neat layoff by him. Jack Wilshire. Promise about Bournemouth once again here. Stanislas, Sermon, Jordan Ibe. Cutting midfield once again there, Ibe. Sermon. Now Francis joins the attack. It's a neat pass inside there to Stanislas, who's trying to link up there with Wilson. It's hooped away by Maguire. Patient stuff there by Bournemouth, but just maybe need to get their shots away a little bit quicker in and around the edge of the area and take a little bit of a chance on a shot because defenders try to block it, go through their legs, you get deflections. Just trying to be a little bit too perfect at the moment, just in that final third. Here's Ive again, who's caught the eye in the opening 11 and a half minutes today. Loney in for Livermore. It's won back by Arter. He's having such a superb campaign. 
for Bournemouth this year. A real boost to have him fit for this match today. Stanislas. Aye. Shifted it. Put the shot away. Jake Livermore was the defensive barrier. Better low from Jordan Aye because it's worth a go from there. Just shift that ball half a yard left or right. Get your shots away and there's big rewards. Here's Al Mohamedi for Hull City. Wilkie. Stockgrass. Lucas, it's a nice pass that, saw some space far side for Maloney, his control was good. Robertson, Maloney, two Scotsmen combining, it's a loose touch there by Sermon. A good brave defending by Francis with a diving header. The Hulls last away game. Was their 5 1 demolition away at Liverpool when they went behind early? They also went down to 10 men early in the game as well when Al Mohamedi was sent off. They picked up four points on their travels so far with a draw at Burnley. With a late, fantastic free kick from Robert Snodgrass to earn a point. A win at Swansea back in August by two goals to nil. Chasing Bournemouth here for the time being. And chasing Jordan Eye, who's still driving off. Again, perhaps took on one man too many. Yeah, just a, not willing enough to get that shot away, but just letting them run at them from deep positions here. Hull City just going to get a lot tighter to the likes of Ibe. Wilshire. It's a good tackle by Livermore to pick Wilshire's pocket. Mason. Just caught there, Mason as he got that pass away. And Hull had the free kick. Referee is Lee Mason today. It was just a little bit of a shame there from Mason. Just releases it maybe a second earlier, and Snodgrass was away on this right hand side because Daniels had committed himself forward. But at the moment, they're failing to pick up Ive. But when he comes in off the line, he gets in the little pockets and he's been found. No one seems to be picking him up. Curtis Davis, Maloney. It's been pushed back there by Smith, but a bit too tight there, Adam Smith. A very fine campaign so far, Adam Smith. There are some Bournemouth fans who have been suggesting that one or two of their players should be in the thinking perhaps of Gareth Southgate now, who is the, of course, interim England boss. Jack Rorsche is the man who I'm sure Gareth Southgate will be here to watch a couple of times in the weeks to come. As he tries to force his way back into the England picture with his loan spell here this year. There's Mason. And goes Robertson, but a good tackle from Stanislas. Wilshire with the early pass, looking for Wilson. There seems to be a foul there by Wilson on Curtis Davis. Well, that's what they can do as well, and they gave Everton many a problem with that kind of little bit of direct play as well. Wilson's so quick when he gets in the channels alongside the centre-backs and Wilshire was looking for that longer pass, which is a little bit of a variation on the play from all the short passing they've been doing, but Wilson's so quick that he can get in behind. Well, Bournemouth have only won one of their previous 12 games against Hull City and that came back in 1995 in the old Division 2. Steve Jones and Matt Holland with the Bournemouth goals that day. Oh, won their last match here, 4-0. Not too long ago in League One when they were led by Peter Taylor. It's been a difficult start for the Tigers here on the south coast in this one. Strength there shown by Livermore. At the bats there for Davis. An in step sermon. Robertson here. Good industry there in that challenge with Wilshire. Livermore. Now Mohamedy. Livermore. Saw Mason on the move. Not 
point in the past, though, that Mason was hoping to profit from. Daniels being pressurised here by Snodgrass. It's a foul given. Uh, a little bit unlucky there, Snodgrass, because he read what Francis was going to do, and he closed down Daniels, and there's a bit of six or one half a dozen of the other there, and I think Daniels got away with it. I think that's what Hull have got to do now and again. If it's too tight, try and get Keane in the game in the channel. And then press in. Well, tenth game in charge, this four. Mike Feeling with Hull. Four wins, one draw, four defeats so far. Did a fine job of guiding the club through that state of disarray in the first few weeks of the season. But now a run of games where they need to pick up some points and try and climb that table once again. Hull's four defeats so far have come against Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester United, so no disgrace in that. They must stop the rot sooner rather than later. Those defeats where they may be just having to sit back and defend. It's these type of games where they think they can get something and they can maybe attack a little bit more, but that gives you sometimes more problems than just sitting back against the big side. So. Mike's got to find a way of getting at teams, which is difficult with the, the quality of player that he's got. He'll definitely have to go in the market January for me. That's one of the things he was asked in his press conference yesterday, whether he will have control over recruitment. The answer was yes. Even though his title is head coach, he does have that final say on transfers, we are led to believe. Now then, that was a rash challenge there by Sam Lucas. Lee Mason's going to his pocket here. It's going to be the game's first yellow card. Well, he's trying to point out that it was the first one, but the first one was a bad one, unfortunately. That's a late challenge, and it deserves a yellow card. Doesn't matter whether it's the first or the uh, 14th challenge. Late, reckless, and it deserved the yellow. So, Kluka's the first name in the book today. Bournemouth free kick once again. Stanislas, the man who hit the woodwork with his first attempt, this time from the much wider position. Free kick for which Cook and Francis have both moved up from the back. Daniel's in there once again too. Francis tried to meet it. He's come back out for Jordan Ive. Lashed away by El Mohamedi. Adam Smith. Harry Arta. Been in good form, Harry Arta. He was their man of the match against Everton, I thought. He's excellent on the ball. Kept it going in the middle of the park with Sermon. They balance each other off perfectly. And where he came from, non-league football, I think it's an, been an amazing rise for him. But it should be a lesson for all youngsters and players in non-league that there is a chance out there. Another good ball from Francis for Ive. Ive sprinting away. It's come the way of Wilson. Got the shot in two. And was straight at David Marshall, but Callum Wilson with his first sight of goal there today. Well, it's becoming a problem. Look, Ibe starts on this left, drifts inside in the pocket. The extra man in midfield is being found by some good passes, particularly from Francis. And Hull are not aware of the movement. They've got to wise up to it. Bush it. Lovely control there by Jack Wilshere. He was able to get past Sam Klukas. Yeah, a little bit over elaborate there, Jack Wilshere just trying to nutmeg Klukas, but got to be better than that on the ball. Oh, there was some lovely warm sunshine in Dorset this morning, but the rain is coming down here now on the south coast. Wilson has arrived. Mohamedy here with the half throw. Waiting for some movement here, the Egyptian. He's gone back for Harry Maguire. Sanchi balled in by Maguire. And Arthur Boric able to gather cleanly and set Bournemouth on their way here with Harry Arter. Trying to bend one up towards Stanislas. 
Suspicion of handball there against Robertson, but nothing given. Run back well by Arta. Hi. Checks to drive at El Mohamedi. There's panic in the whole defence, but El Mohamedi is faced with Ive like that. It's a free kick once again for Bournemouth. Well played um, Jordan Ive. El Mohamedi's having his problems. He doesn't know whether to go tight, whether to pull inside, stay on the outside. Consequently, when he starts running at you, they're the fouls you're going to give away. Got to really stop it from the source. Get tighter, make it more difficult for Jordan Ibe. Well, Ibe, who won the free kick, is the man who will take it here for Bournemouth. Bounced off the wall, it came towards Arta. Marshall, second time around, gathers for Hull City. the goalkeeper who in his only previous game here in the stadium let in five goals in a 5-3 loss for Cardiff two years ago. It's not been the ideal start for him today. Wilshire. Francis for Sermon. Daniels, the man who's goal devised these two sides here today. Just past the midway point of the first half. Sermon. Ariata. He was part of the Irish squad for their World Cup for the Fires last week, Ariata. Although he didn't pitch in either game due to the groin problem, which has been hampering him over the past couple of weeks. Nice pass there by Daniels for Ibe, who has space to move into here. Oh, off the bar! Callum Wilson's effort. There's Wilshire. Sermon arriving now. And Hull surviving there. They might have been two goals down. Oh, Dominic, I don't know how many warnings they want from Jordan Ibe, but they simply are not taking care of him. And he's, uh, he's running amok at the moment. Callum Wilson was unlucky there. Trying to divert that into the, the goal, coming off the crossbar, but this game's going to be out of Hull's grasp if they don't really stop the threat of Jordan Ibe. That's twice now that Bournemouth have hit the frame of the goal. Remember in their last match at Watford two weeks ago, they hit the woodwork three times. They were so close there to being two up here, Bournemouth, and it was Callum Wilson who came very, very close. Well, Daniels gets forward on this left-hand side, and it allows Ibe to come off of the line, and here you go. He starts inside, then goes on the outside, and look, this is a free run. There's no one within 15, 20 yards. Cuts it back for Wilson, he gets unlucky. That's difficult to hit the target there, because he's gone kind of past that near post, but he gets unlucky with this. And Huller lucky not to be 2-0 down. Hoping to get back towards his best once again, Callum Wilson. Two goals so far this year. I suppose at Watford in the 2-2 draw, he's all scored a winner here against West Bromwich Albion. The man who missed six months of last season after that serious knee problem. It's an area where they do have plenty of competition these days up front. Bournemouth, Benikophobi, Josh King are both on their bench today. Here's Ibe again. Oh, Mohamedy with a foot in that time. Daniels in support. It's a foul by Snodgrass. Oh, a little bit late from Snodgrass, but Jordan Ibe is in acres of room down this left-hand side, Joe. And if he's not on the left-hand side and he drifts in, Daniels is in that position, or Ibe gets it on the inside. There you go again, look at that. Oh, Mohamed, he's right in there, right back spots, vacant again, and it's all too easy. Here's the Bournemouth free kick, dropping into a good area, but Marshall gathering in confident fashion. Part of a whole back line though now who've let in 12 goals. And just over three matches. Part of the pitch where they have to tighten up. And chasing the game once again here today. 
Wilshere. He's done well there. The Bournemouth fans appreciating that. That's better, Jack Wilshere. That's what we'd like to see for England. Someone carrying the ball. He's not been on the ball that much, but as long as the other players are getting plenty of it, the likes of Jordan Ibe, it doesn't matter. But you still like to see Jack Wilshere give him more of the ball. For you, he's done his best position. So often we've seen him playing in a deeper role. He has that slightly more advanced midfield role here today. No, I think uh, I'd like to see him a little bit deeper because he runs with the ball and carries it into the positions between the lines rather than passing it. So I'd like to see him a little bit deeper than that, but with Sermon and Arta in good form, this is uh, suiting him at the moment and probably in that deeper role, hasn't quite got the fitness in there at the moment. But he's a quality player, there's no doubt about it. But quality players have to get on the ball. Wilson. Stanislas, twisting past Mavoni, and shooting is deflected. Well, Marshall there was motionless, and that wasn't too far away. Well, if it's the target, it's 2 0, simple as that, Joe. He's trying to hit across this one. Big deflection off of Robertson, and maybe a yard wide. Perfect angle on the camera. Coming up towards the half an hour mark, Bournemouth might feel by now they could be two or three goals in front. Can they make this dominance count? Jordan I with the corner. Defended by the near post by Will Keane. To go out of play, that will be a Bournemouth throw. It'll be left here for Steve Cook, who will try and launch one long here for Bournemouth. In towards Francis, will share. The players quick to get tight to him there, not allowing any space inside the penalty area. Francis. And Wilson went to ground there, but there was no foul seen. Curtis Davis was the man who was tight to his back. It was given away by Maloney. Wilshere, Lucas with a good foot in, here's Sermon, Daniels. Super stuff there from Jordan I. It's been a joy to watch, there's the shot! Well, that would have been something very special had that dipped a few yards lower. Well, player in the match so far, Jordan I, he's got to sustain it for 90 minutes. I was here when he played for Liverpool last season, John, I think he signed off the back of that performance. He he ran Bournemouth ragged, that one's not over the top, always rising, but this is a problem. When he's coming inside, he's making up the extra man and... Oh, Hull are not coping with it. Well, I recall that game here back here, I think early April, when Jurgen Klopp made plenty of changes and named quite a young Liverpool team that day. They won by two goals to one. Jordan Ives certainly caught the eye. He did play 40 games last year for Liverpool in all competitions, so he's got plenty of games under his belt. Still just 20, and he was clattered there from Maguire, but no foul was given. Better tackle, it's what they've got to do. He did stay down, I, but he's back to his feet now. There's a ball been here towards Sean Maloney for Hull, and Boric beats him to it. Jordan I is back to his feet, but does look a bit winded by that crunching challenge which came in from Maguire. Yeah, he's not, it wasn't a foul, but it was one of those opportunities where you could take the ball and the man, and he took that opportunity, and that's what you've got to do. One of your favourites from yesteryear. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a sitting duck there, Jordan Knight. <laughs> Wilson. Sermon there was the furthest man forward. Away by Maguire. There's appeals there for offside against Callum Wilson, but there was no flag forthcoming. We can't get enough possession of the ball at the moment. Hull and very difficult for them to get out, especially for... Keen up front, not really been in the game. He's just been chasing the possession of Bournemouth. Francis. 
Wilson. Block came in by Maguire. Good defending Maguire. Well played Francis again. He's one of the best, I think, in the Premier League. And in fact, he's playing for Bournemouth. He doesn't get much recognition, but he's as good as the other England centre-backs for me. Robert Snodgrass for Hull. He's Maloney, and he's been quiet so far. Klukas. Robertson well forward here. Livermore. Robertson given time to whip that ball in. He's going to go behind for a corner. Bournemouth there just switched off for a split second. Well, they'll welcome this hole. At least it's a, an opportunity to commit more players to the attack for this set piece corner kick on the left hand side. And under the cosh, haven't they? Well, Hull have scored four set piece goals so far this season, the most in this division. Here's the ball being towards Maguire. There was some wrestling going on there, and a few Hull players looking towards Lee Mason, suggesting that might have been a foul there on Maguire. Well, Maguire and Cook, I think they're both wrestling. You can see here, look, Cook's trying to block his run. He's not really looking at the ball. He's playing a dangerous game. And for me, he's lucky not to get away with a penalty kick against him there because he's not watching the ball at all. Ryan Mason deflected. It's 1-1. It's a stroke of fortune for Hull City, but they'll take it. They're back on level terms here. And Ryan Mason will claim his first league goal for the club. Their record signing, and it's 1-1. Well, exactly what I was saying about having shots outside the area. Any little deflection, and it can go your way, and it certainly did on this occasion. But it's a giveaway from Bournemouth at the back. Cook gives it away straight. There's the turnover. Fouled into Mason there. He comes on his right foot. There's the big deflection, and the keeper's got no chance, but that's a giveaway from Cook there. If it's turned over that quickly, you've got no chance of defending it. Sermon comes in for the block. Cook gets back as well, tries to block it. He has the deflection. And it's 1-1. First shot of goal, I think. And it's all from giving the ball away. And, of course, Mason taking the opportunity to have a shot. Well, the game in which Hull have clearly been second best, but they got themselves back on level terms. That telling touch came off Steve Cook. And is playing his 200th Bournemouth game here. That deflection saw the ball loop past Arta Boric. And you think now that Eddie Howe and Bournemouth will just look back on the chances they've had to be perhaps out of sight in the game. But now back to square one once again. They could have been having more shots like Mason had there, Joe, because, you know, on a wet, greasy day here today, any deflection, the keeper's got no chance. There's a late tackle there by Snodgrass on Harry Arter. Harry he... Arter appears to be in some pain. And that's the first of a few from... Oh, sorry, that's a few, I think, from Snodgrass. He's lucky if he doesn't get a yellow card here because there's about two or three he's been given leniency from Mr Mason but let's see if it was late yeah it was late having got the other side Harry Arter there's the challenge in on the ankle lucky boy if he doesn't get a yellow just a stern talking to for Snodgrass nothing more than that Arter is slowly trying to get back to his feet the physio has not come on so I think that tells you Nothing too serious here for the Bournemouth midfield player. Although he might need the physio. <laughs> He's wondering where he is. And it's a good 30 yards from goal here, but Sermon and Stanislas both fancy it. Stanislas. Very simple save for Marshall. No withdrawing of the arms here from Marshall. He's read it, he's over quickly, and it's an easy take for him. Here's Snodgrass. A bit more of a spring in the step now for Hull City. Robertson. Will Keane. Snodgrass. Robertson, good tackle there by Smith. It had to be as well because Robertson was in behind him. It's 
been given away then by Wilson. And the tide is turning here. Mason. Snodgrass arrives back post, just asking a bit too much of him. And he's been penalised for a foul again. As you say, he can't be too far away now from booking for persistent fouling. Robert Snodgrass. I think Harry Art has gone down after that challenge from Snodgrass earlier on. And he's lucky not to have got that yellow card. Wasn't the first from Snodgrass either, I think that was about three in quick succession. This should be a blow for Bournemouth if uh, their player of the moment has to go off. Well, eight points in the first seven games, there have been a solid start for Bournemouth. They made a flying start today. Eddie has seen play back. And now they'll be concerned with Arta receiving attention here. I did mention earlier he didn't play in those two qualifiers for Ireland last week. He's not played a competitive game yet for the Irish, which still means he could switch allegiance back to England again. He was born in Sid Cup, and there have been some who have been championing his cause over the past few weeks. He's a quality player. He uh, really does the, the easy things in midfield, and he keeps that ball moving and moving at a pace. I think that's the key. When you watch England in possession, and a lot of the... Uh, international sides it's all too slow he loves to move it around very hungry for the game as well and that comes from an non-league upbringing well he's off the pitch for now Arthur as Arthur Boric prepares to get the game going again he's well keen Arthur's back on now Livermore Mason might that fly again here. This time it was blocked away by Francis. Robertson. Snodgrass with a header. Let's give them a little bit of belief, the goal. They're, at least they're getting numbers forward now, but it may open the game up in this direction as well. Walshier. Clearly being tugged back there by Maloney. He was a bit cynical that by Maloney. He's maybe lucky to get away with it. Andrew Sermon. Walshe. Stanislas in for Smith. A bit tight and congested, but Smith did well there for Bournemouth. Stanislas battling there with Robertson. We all know Bournemouth are very easy on the eye going forwards, but can be fragile defensively. Remember that last match at Vicarage Row where they led twice against Watford but were pegged back twice. Through the game 2 2. They've been pegged back once again today. It's frustrating when you've had so much of the play. And just to go back to the fact that they've had so many sh uh, shooting opportunities that they've not taken them on. I think it's something that they can improve in their play. They've got good possession up to that last third. but. Just need to take a little bit more of a risk. We're edging towards half time here. Stanislas with the Bournemouth free kick. Whipped in towards Daniels, and it's turned in, and it was Steve Cook, I think, on his landmark day. His 200th match for Bournemouth, and he's put them in front once again. Here's deflection. Played a big part in the equaliser, but he's scored at the right end, and it's 2 1 Bournemouth. It was poor marking, but it's a great header. Look, gets in front of his marker, heads it down, and the keeper's got no chance. Great header from Cook, congratulations to him. He was the one who gave the ball away, and then the deflection up the other end for the equaliser, but he's responded in great fashion. There you go, loses his marker, El Mohamedi. Nowhere near him, really, when he's leaping, he's coming, but it's a good header, good firm header, zips off the surface, keeper's got no chance. An eventful first half for that man, Steve Cook. The man who was signed from Brighton five years ago for just £200,000. All the examples of the fine business Bournemouth have done in recent years here. There's a thumping header. 
And Bournemouth are in front for the second time today. Callum Wilson. Callum Wilson deemed guilty of a foul. You can see his frustration. He couldn't quite get the ball out of his feet there. Callum Wilson, that's why it's being given, but it is frustrating. When you do get the other side of the midfield, you've got a free run at that. Although central defenders or back four just couldn't dig the ball out. Here's Snodgrass. Can Hull respond again here? Mason. Makes that pass out wide for Maloney. Maloney might be there to be hit now. He was patient, worked the space for the shot, and he has scored some special goals over the years. Been starved of the ball, really, Maloney. This is an example of what he can do coming on his favoured side. Comes across a few defenders, curls for the far corner, but he's over the top. But get him enough of the ball and he'll produce something like that. He can go on the outside, get his crosses in, come on the inside, get his shots away. But when you haven't had a lot of the ball, you get a little bit rusty when it does come to you. Here's Wilshere for Bournemouth. Two set-piece goals here, which have cost Hull in this first half. Which I'm sure will frustrate Mike Feetham. Here's I. Daniels. Break the way of Wilson. That is a penalty for a foul by Robert Snodgrass. He's booked as well. Well, he went lunging in there. And Bournemouth had the chance to pull further clear. Well, coming up to the break, this is crazy. Snodgrass has a rush of blood there. Look at that, that's clear. Really catches Wilson, he's late. And that's about the full foul on the trot. That's really reckless. And his manager will be fuming at him. There was no danger whatsoever. That's a crazy challenge from Snodgrass and such an easy decision for the referee, Lee Mason. That's really a hot head, isn't it? After three or four fouls on the trot, needed to calm down. Real lack of composure shown from Robert Snodgrass. So with half-time only a few moments away, the chance will fall here for Junior Stanislas. <laughs> Taken with a plot. Bournemouth lead here by three goals to one. A scoreline which reflects their dominance in this first half today. Bournemouth three, Hull City one. Well, quite cool from Stanislas, straight down the middle, waiting for the keeper to dive. There you can see, just chips it down the middle of the goal. So many of the keepers guess now that fair chance of scoring if you just hit it down the middle. And you're right, Joe, it's no more than they deserve. Could have been more, really. Well, I just can't understand this challenge. There's no danger at all. Look at that. That's just reckless. Lee Mason's only about five yards away. It's an easy decision. And I think it's just chucked the game away for his team. That was crazy. And we're now in first half, at a time of which there'll be three minutes. Just when Hull got themselves back in the game. A couple of quick fire goals from Bournemouth from Cook and then Stanislas. And it's an uphill task once again now for Hull City. El Mohamedy. And towards Mason. Boric will come and gather that. And take charge of the situation. Well, His team worked their way back into the game, but he'll be furious at the two goals they've just given away. Well, he sure will. One from a set piece, deep. Lack of marking, El Mohamedy had Cook, but it's just let him go completely. And then the penalty. I mean, that's just chucked the game away, I feel. Really hard to come back from that. Had a bit of good fortune in getting the equaliser, deflected goal from Mason. But that really has chucked it away. And when he sees it, although it's difficult to see from that side of the pitch for Mike Phelan, when he sees it and reflects on it, I'm sure he's going to get an ear bashing Snodgrass. 
We have been Hull's standout player in the first month or two of this season. The top scorer with four goals to his name. But he lost his head there and it's cost his team. You can see it coming as well, Joe, couldn't you? There was two or three challenges before it. It was lucky not to get a card. And then all of a sudden, that's the other one. You think you've got away with it, but in the penalty area, there's just simply no excuse. You've got to have the composure. Get into the break, 2-1. They're still well in the game. Now they've got it all to do. Lucas. Good run here by San Lucas. Robertson. The nice ball in that. Just a yard too far in front of Will Keane. It was a good ball, wasn't it? Really in an area where the keeper couldn't come for it. The centre-backs were a little bit edgy. Should they get a touch, it's an own goal. Just needed a little bit more commitment. Mason had got in the area with Keane, but just think Keane was a little bit on his heels there. Should have been anticipating that a bit better. One of the best bits of service that Will Keane has had in the game so far. But he could not make the most of it. Snodgrass. Well, there goes the half-time whistle, a very eventful first half here. It was Daniels who got Bournemouth on their way in the opening five minutes. Hull hit back, Ryan Mason's goal deflected in off Steve Cook. He then scored at the other end, not the right end, to put Bournemouth in front again. And then just before half-time, Junior Stanislas scored Bournemouth's third goal after the loss of composure from Robert Snodgrass. And the half-time score here in the Premier League is Bournemouth 3, Hull City 1. Welcome back to the Vitality Stadium where Bournemouth lead Hull City by three goals to one in the Premier League. It will be Hull who will get the match underway once again. There have been no half-time changes here in terms of personnel. Bournemouth with a healthy cushion. A game where they were pegged back at 1-1, but towards the end of that first half, they pulled away once again with the goals from Cook and Stanislas. Can they push on now and record all three points here in front of their home fans today? Just waiting for Lee Mason to get his watch in order and get this match underway once again. Well, Bournemouth are on course of what would be their third home win in a row in the Premier League. That's the 1-0 wins over West Brom and Everton in recent weeks. They've never won three games here on the bounce since they've been a Premier League side. On the balance of that first half, Tony Gale, they are very good value for this two-goal lead here, which they enjoy today. Yeah, much the better team. be interesting to see how Hull respond, though, Joe. Well, they've made no half-time changes, Hull City. Here's Sean Maloney, that's a good ball in. That's the way by Steve Cook, who had that very eventful first half of Bournemouth. Well, that was a great header from Cook, because I think Snodgrass had just got in front of Charlie Daniels and may have got on the end of that. Here's Sam Kalukas. That's a good start to this second half from Hull City. There might be a few, maybe fierce words from Mike Feardham ringing their ears. And Snodgrass, who was the man who gave away that late first half penalty, which has given his team this mountain to climb now, but he do look sprightly in his opening minutes after the break. It started quite sharply, Hull, but they've got to sustain that. They've got to get those that possession and create chances out of it, same as Maloney did for that cross there. That was a good ball in. Just got to get in that last third of Bournemouth a lot more than what they did in that first half. They allowed Bournemouth to dictate. Here's Callum Wilson for Bournemouth. Able to turn. Jordan I. What was by Harry Maguire? One of the things that Hull must improve upon is their dealing with Jordan I, who in the first half ran riot at times. 
Well, there must have been a temptation to make a half-time change or two for Mike Feedham, but he stuck with the players out there to try and put things right now. Well, he's got to give them a go, yep. <laughs> There's the signal, though, for a few subs to get warmed up. Mahamadi with a throw. Kicked away by Sermon for Bournemouth. Andy Robertson, Maloney, Robertson. Nice football here by Hull. Ryan Mason. It's a bit short that pass though for Maloney. Francis with the intervention. Adam Smith. Mason tracking back. Smith trying to beat Klukas. Robertson. Mason's ball forward, but it's come the way of Jack Wilshere. Wilshere for Arter. Daniels. The man who got the ball rolling with the goal scoring here today. Jordan I. Renewing that battle with El Mohamedi. And I wins that battle. The searching ball in, which was cleared away by Robertson. Well, Mohamed, he's not really had any idea how to stop Jordan Ive at the moment. Bournemouth should be shoveling it out there as much as they can to him. There's a corner kick. Bournemouth have woke up this second half. Just keep getting the ball out to Jordan Ive. He's doing all the danger. Uh, Daniels must be delighted at the signing of Jordan Ive. It allows him to get forward and wide on that left side when Jordan Ive drifts in. Arias amongst those waiting for the ball in here. Charlie Daniels on set piece duty for Bournemouth. See I there just in front of David Marshall. Wilson by the near post. Whips in by Daniels. It's Cook! Marshall with some superb reflexes there as Steve Cook came close to Bournemouth. Well, not often that centre-back gets a double, but he nearly did here. Steve Cook gets it down on the target. Just reactions, wasn't it, from Marshall from that close in. Just couldn't quite get up high enough there, Cook, to get it down onto the floor. Here's I. Just given away, maybe a chance to break for Hull, but they have very few players forward. A little bit tight and congested. Here's Livermore, and now Robertson. On the fourth Bournemouth goal, if Cook had been able to beat Marshall there, might have put this game to bed. The centre-back who had a good goal-scoring record last year, Steve Cook, he scored four times in this division, only Scott Dan at Crystal Palace scored more as a defender last season. It's Maguire, it's deemed to be a push there by Callum Wilson. Robertson, Maloney. Mason. Maloney. Able to drive at Smith. Mason's there in support. It's a poor ball by Mason. Well, it's better from Ryan Mason driving forward into those positions. That's what he's got to do if they want to change the game around. Sit in those little pockets. Well, there's Michael Dawson, who's on the bench for Hull here. Not part of their 18-man playing squad, but as the club captain, he's in effect part of their coaching staff here today. Still yet to appear so far this campaign, but his return may well come next weekend. Did play for the development team in a win against Leeds last night. He's my teammate as well, Joe, isn't he? On midweek sport special. Good lad, Michael. <laughs> uh, just made a couple of appearances whilst he's been injured, but I hope he's back in action soon. He's a man who may well have options when his playing day has come to a close, both as a coach, maybe as a pundit too. But he's a man that Hull will want back on the pitch in the here and now. 
Snodgrass. I went back with him. It's going to be a corner. Maybe a chance for Hull to try and drag themselves right back into this game again here from this. Snodgrass with the ball in towards Maguire. Boruch, I think it was fouled there, the referee played the advantage. It's quickly dispatched there by Boruch up to Wilshire. Hull have it back straight away. Snodgrass. Dropping towards Maloney, Boric there opting to punch away when he perhaps could have caught that one. Sermon. Wilshire. Well, we still yet to play 90 minutes since he arrived here at Bournemouth. Well, this is when I like him better, Jack Wilshire, when he's facing you know, he can look forward and he can run with the ball at five or ten yards and he makes it look so much easier. This is Jordan Ibe teasing Al Mohamedy. Sermon. Adam Smith. Simon Francis getting past Robertson, finding Wilshire in space here. Charged down by Maguire. Well played Simon Francis again, willing to run the ball out the back, and as soon as you do, you make up the spare man, and it releases someone like Jack Wilshire. Too many defenders just take the easy option and just pass it into a midfield player, get it back, go square. But Francis always tries to look forward, which is, uh, is really good. Well, here's the game's first substitution. Sean Maloney departing for Hull City. After a fairly ineffective game from him. And Tom Huddleston is the man who comes on. He'd start the first six games this campaign on the bench for the last two. And he will try and make an impact here as a second half substitute. Daniels. Wilshire. Wilshere has ended up there in the form of fans behind that goal, but he's helped back on the pitch again. Smith. Tackled by Huddleston, and now Klukas with space to move into here with Smith out of position. Support arriving now for Klukas. He's up against Sermon. Robertson fizzed in just too high, though, for Keane. Huddleston. A good area, but it's away by Stanislas of Bournemouth. Wilson back on defensive duty, and he was nudged from behind. Well, it makes him a little bit stronger in the middle of the park with Huddleston going in there with Livermore. And Ryan makes some plenty of Premier League experience in there between those three. Klukas coming out to this left-hand side now, naturally left-footed. Playing up top, really, in a three, so he'll be expected to get forward and get those crosses in, whipped in, where he's just been sitting in there in midfield so I think it looks like it's now up to Livermore to pick up Jack Wilshere he's the holding midfield player before this game six of Hull seven goals this season have been second half goals a team who comes to life late in games they've got just over half an hour here to try and claw back this two-goal deficit. Klukas. He was taken to life in the big time very well. His first year in this division, he was signed from Chesterfield just over a year ago. Form of youth play with Leicester City. That's control there by Klukas. It's a good pass to Andy Robertson. Three wait for the ball being kicked with the header away. Wilshere jumping well. Probably their best passage of play they've had in the whole game. Hull uh, putting a couple of passes together and at least trying to get it out wide and get those crosses in. Daniel for Bournemouth. Here's I. Good tackle by Maguire. Snodgrass. 
eager to atone for the first half penalty he gave away. He produced something at the right end in the second half for Hull City. Huddleston, Robertson, Livermore. Huddleston, typical expansive pass from him to find Al Mohamedi. Snodgrass, looking for Keane. Knocks away by Stanislas, but former peer can't push out. Robertson's ball forward, Francis has to be careful here. Keane applies the pressure. And no chances taken by the Bournemouth captain. Yeah, well played, well defended. Robertson's tackle there, it's fallen the way of Harry Arter. Taken out there by Robertson. The referee has played the advantage, but there was no advantage forthcoming. Free kick given, and he'll come back now and book Andy Robertson. I don't think there's any question of that, Harry Arter's had a, been on the end of a couple of those where he's just got in front and they've had to pull him down. Lee Mason tried to give the, the benefit of the doubt with the, the advantage, but I think Tom Adelston fouled him after that as well, so in the end he had to pull it, pull it back. There you go, big lunge. There can be no complaints about that. Robertson, the third Hull player to be shown a yellow card so far today. Shevsky is born with a chance to push forward themselves now after a good spell there from Hull. The Bournemouth change imminent with Josh King. Bats come off the bench for them. Meantime, here's Sermon. Stanislas. Steve Cook. Francis. And Smith was cutting inside there, but couldn't control the ball. And here's Livermore now for Hull. Daniels beating Snodgrass to it. Jordan I. The loose touch by him. Seized upon by El Mohamedi. Will Keane. Ryan Mason. Was he caught there? And the Hull fans to our left were convinced there was an infringement. Mason stayed down, but Lee Mason gives nothing. Bournemouth now on the counter attack with Stanislas. It's better from Hull because it's a driving run from Mason who's broke from the midfield area and they've been much better in the second half. And we'll see that again shortly. Lee Mason was right up with play as Ryan Mason went tumbling. Sermon. Wilshere. His eye. Gets the shot away. Dragged a couple of yards off target. Well, he's disappointed with himself because he makes himself a yard and then you've got to hit the target, you really have, look. Comes inside and he's dragged it wide. Up the other end, Ryan Mason drives in the area, just gets beyond the other midfield players. Uh, looks like he, the touch was a little bit heavy to me. A change here for Bournemouth. Jordan Ibe is still yet to complete a game since he joined the club from Liverpool. He's the man being sacrificed here. He had that wonderful start to the game. I think Al Mohamed will be happy he's gone off. He's been replaced here by Josh King. Remember, he came off the bench and scored within a minute in the last match at Watford two weeks ago. Andy Robertson is down here for Hull City. We understand he'll be going off as well shortly. He's being helped back to his feet by the whole medical staff, but he'll be going off the pitch and staying off the pitch, we're told. Dama Diamande is stripped off on the far side, waiting to come off the bench. 
And he scored his first ever international goal for Norway against San Marino on Tuesday night. Before this game, it had been a regular start-up so far, this campaign for Hull. Saving his time here, Robertson. Hull will hope it won't be a long-term problem for him. They're demanding now a more offensive player coming on as they have just shy of half an hour to try and gain a point perhaps in the game. Yeah, it looks like Lucas has uh, just gone into that back four now, so three different positions for him during the game. And that's how Mike has to juggle around with the team because he hasn't got the biggest of squads, show. And I think you're right with the injury to Robertson. It's, uh, it's one that he doesn't need. Not overloaded with players. And a defensive area in particular where Hull are quite short. Will shift for ball. Stanislas. Maguire away. Snodgrass going in, but one back superbly by Jack Wilshire. I understand the calf problem has forced Robertson off. Hopefully he'll be patched up in time for the game against Stoke at home next weekend. Do you have a run of games coming up, Hull? Well, they'll want to take some points, try and climb the table once more. Stoke, Watford, Southampton, Sunderland, West Brom and Middlesbrough. Their next six games after this one. This one here is far from over just yet. Smith for Bournemouth. King, back for Smith. Chance here! There's number four from Junior Stanislas. It might just steal three points of Bournemouth and a first straight home win for the first time in the Premier League. It was a lovely finish to a flowing move and Bournemouth have hit four. It was a lovely touch by King. Smith and King combine on this right-hand side. Look, he just, just turns it around the corner through the legs of Klukas and there's a great ball into the far post and that's slid home by Stanislas really well. Easy to lean back and blast these ones over the top. Once you get to the dead ball line, pick someone out, he does. Stanislas, good finish, 4-1. Just as Hull had probably their best passage in the game. Really well worked down that right-hand side, and he'll like a goal like that because he loves his team playing good football, and that was really a good move. Well, the scoreline with a very healthy complexion now for Bournemouth, a double for Junior Epstanislas. It's becoming a torrid day for Hull City. And there's still over 25 minutes to go here. Mike Feelings made changes, but his team now find themselves three goals adrift. It's becoming a tough day at the office for him. just about put them out of sight now, Joe, but it's, it's, it's ironic really when Hull were having probably their best passage of play. A good movement, wasn't it, down the right-hand side? And Stockgrass and Diamandi on the stretch, unable to get the contact he was hoping for. Well, good ball in, little flick on that near post and he just can't slide Diamandi to get that back on the target. A lot better from Hull this second half, more crosses in the area, getting into that last third, right and left, getting their crosses in, but really should have been at it like that from the start of the game. His kick. There's maybe impact coming off the bench then for the second match in a row. Scored that goal, but Watford made one here. And with his parts to play in that lovely flowy move. We do have this rivalry now in several areas of the pitch, particularly in the final third where Eddie Howe has plenty of options. Yeah. 
Here's Arthur. Huddleston. It's loose. You get the sense here, a few hull heads now have dropped. Livermore. Huddleston. Want to chase for dear man Nick. Cook takes command over Bournemouth. Lucas. Mason. Draw up towards Keane. He's had no change of Francis or Cook in this match today. Harry Maguire. King. Livermore came in. Could get some of the ball there, Livermore. Yeah, definitely got the ball first. I think it's clearly a case today, though. The team have played together a lot. Obviously, a couple of newcomers into it. You know, Jack Wilshire being the big name, but know exactly what they're doing, how they're playing. And a team have been hastily assembled, really. And Mike Phelan's really up against it, but he'll give it a good go. There's no doubt in my mind that they've appointed the right manager. Why the delay was, I don't know. Here's Diamandi. Battle there with Francis. It'll be a corner for Hull City. First mistake of the game from Francis. He's probably allowed one, but Hull don't capitalise. Give the ball away. Yeah, Mandy gets it a dead ball line, but you see that touch is a little bit heavy there. That gives Boric a chance to come and smother. It's a tall order, but can Hull try and pinch one back here? It's a good ball in by Snodgrass. King jumping for Bournemouth. That is out of the stadium from Stan Klukas uh, in the car park. The, not the, sorry, Joe, right on our trucks probably, right outside, but uh, not the biggest of stands behind the goal, but it still takes some clearing, doesn't it, from just outside the area? Well, a good day for everyone in the Bournemouth perspective, and particularly there for that man, the owner, Maxim Denim. We did say earlier on that Bournemouth aren't minnows anymore. There has been plenty of investment here. The best part of £80 million spent in the past three transfer windows, but that investment is certainly bearing fruit on the pitch. Here's Josh King. Jack Wilshere driving away. Options left and right. That's Wilson! It was powerful. That's where you like to see Jack Wilshere, just getting the other side of the midfield and always pick a pass. He's waiting for the movement of Wilson, he checks out, then he comes back, comes inside Davis, gets his shot away, but it's too crisp a shot, really. Sometimes you like to miss it, then maybe, and they sneak in the corners, but that's uh, caught that two flush and straight at the keeper. The sort of game now that some of these Bournemouth forwards might just save it. There might be chances coming to add to their goal, Tavis. Six goals and counting in the past two games now for Bournemouth. A team who are so easy on the eye going forward. They have plenty of firepower about them. down but to no avail sometimes just gives you a little bit of a chance cook he gave the goal away for the equalizer but certainly redeemed himself by going up the other end and scoring one but he's been one of the successful is here at Bournemouth I think cook and you look at Francis and the boys who've you know, followed their manager about and know exactly how their manager wants to play sometimes they make the odd mistake but they're still trying to do it in the right fashion playing good football we mentioned the cash they splashed over the past year or so, but it was before that when they signed the likes of Smith and Francis and 
Cook and Arter, Daniels, all on free transfers or only a couple of hundred thousand pounds. Wonderful business done, and players who have been able to show that they can do it at the very highest level too. And they haven't let their manager down, let their faith in the manager down, but then you just sprinkle it with a little bit of quality, the likes of Wilson. Certainly the likes of Wilshire, who we haven't seen the best of yet, but that's a good thing, because there's better to come for Bournemouth. Certainly now how they find Jack Wilshire, and maybe in dropping back into maybe a little bit deeper role where he's carrying the ball a bit more, but the moment he's getting through the game and getting that all-important match fitness, because that's not just good for Bournemouth. But looking at England the other night, that's certainly good for England because there wasn't a lot in that midfield. A good long term too for his parent club Arsenal. Wilson. He's been bright and busy. Wilshire. Two players there trying to stop him. The only way of doing it was via unfair means and Bournemouth have a free kick, which is just about in shooting range. There's nowhere to go here, so he does well to get the foul, Jack Wilshere. Just sucks two or three in and Livermore give away the foul, but... It's uh, just that little bit more quality, just to have that little bit split second more on the time on the ball. Well, Arter and Sermon both standing over the free kick and so is Stanislas it's a short one for Wilshire Adam Smith strength there by King Arter good pace on the passing there but Wilshire couldn't get that return ball right for Stanislas Sermon with the foot in Keane was strong there for Hull. It was a great little ball, wasn't it, round the corner as well, and I think Jack was more sort of annoyed with himself that he messed up the easy pass. Livermore. Mason. Livermore. And Daniels for Hull. Sermon. Here's Smith. King turning past Klukas. Wilshire. There's Daniels. Really enjoying their football here, Bournemouth, and I'm sure Eddie Howe will be enjoying watching his team. Arter. Now it's Smith. Livermore. Klukas. Livermore. It's going to be a fourth straight defeat in the Premier League for Hull City. And for that flying start where they won their first two top flight games for the first time in the club's history, things have turned sour. The referee has stopped it here because Steve Cook has gone down with a head problem. He just looks a little bit dizzy, dazed. Thinks he's OK. I think that was the lip reading that I got, but it's always dangerous. And not one really to be going down, rolling about, feigning injury. Well, I'm not too sure where the incident occurred, but he is smiling, which is good to see. Bournemouth were planning a change with Dan Gosling coming off the bench. They may just hang on a minute here to check the well-being of Steve Cook before they make the substitution. His team in a very healthy position, but he won't particularly want to change his back line right now. Just 25 years of age, Steve Cook, a player who can still get better. The man who joined Bournemouth when he was in League One. Yeah, I think he'll learn when and when not to play at the back. And certainly in the Premier League, it's a 
It's a harsh learning world, I think, because one mistake in that position, and generally it's a goal. As he saw in the first half when he gave the ball away and then ended up deflecting it, but straight back into the action and score from a set piece as well, which was a good thing for him. He's a good player. So here's Hull's final change. David Myther is the man coming off the bench in place of Ryan Mason. He did score Myther coming off the bench in the last away game at Liverpool, that 5-1 hammering. Well, Jack Wilshere still not playing a full 90 minutes, but again, he's shown plenty to provoke the applause of the home support here today. Lovely player to watch. He's had a fine game. He's been replaced by Dan Gosling. Yeah, just a shame he couldn't go the full 90. Up. And Eddie Howe doesn't want to give this game up. I know it's a convincing scoreline at the moment, but just also keeps a little bit of game time in Dan, Dan Gosling as well, who's also been a, a good player for Bournemouth. Steve Cook, glad to see he's back on the pitch once again. Here's Gosling. He's come off the bench for the seventh match in a row. He was a regular starter last year, but he's been the man to miss out since the arrival of Jack Wilshire. Wilson here up against Maguire. Good ball that is from Sermon. I mean, they play it to him square and he just turns it around the corner blind and you know straight away Callum Wilson is going to run in that channel. And even if he doesn't get the ball to his feet, he's certainly going to run it down and stop the opposition getting it out cleanly. Huddleston. Now Mohamedy, Sermon, such a fantastic servant to Bournemouth, Andrew Sermon. This is his 86th league start in a row. Remarkable consistency from him. Player who rarely misplaces a pass. His third year now, his third spell here. One of those trusted lieutenants in Eddie Howe's setup here. Yeah, steady player, isn't he? You wouldn't say, guys. You know, he's done this, that or the other, picking out brilliant passes and all that, but he keeps the flow of the game going. He keeps the screen on the back four. And I think most importantly, he's got a left foot. And it does give you a little bit of a vital balance in there in that midfield. If you've got two sitting players and, and one of them's got a, a good a left foot as he has, it gives you a lovely little bit of balance. King. Gosling. A fine day all round for Bournemouth. They'll have a bigger test though coming up next weekend when they welcome Tottenham down here to Dorset. That will be an indicator of just how much they have improved over the past few weeks. Seems to recall Tottenham came here last year, I think scored five goals in the game. See how Bournemouth cope against one of the championship contenders in the Premier League this season. But there is certainly much to be pleased about here for Eddie Howe's side. Progress being made once again in this remarkable success story in recent years. Sermon. Smith. King. The movement there by Gosvick, trying to return the favour for the King. Well read there by Huddleston. He was a touch over elaborate. King. Well, he's done well. Smith. Huddleston still being pushed back here towards his own byline. Awkward moments there for Hull. Anywhere will do for Myler. Gosvick. Arter for Wilson, Arter trying to barrage his way forward, King, Bournemouth corner. I think Harry Arter's maybe struggling with that knock he had in the first half. 
challenge he got from Snodgrass. He's I see him limping slightly. He's trying to get through this game, but nearly broke through that time. King with the ball bit here. Three header. It's five. It's Callum Wilson. It is a fantastic day for Borman. They have been superb and they have been rampant. Well, it's just a free header on the far post. He's not happy with that, Mike Feeling. I mean, the, the marking's awful. Josh King just gets his head up, look, cross onto the far post. And he just doesn't even have to jump or anything, Wilson. Just stands there and just gets the header home. No marking at all, plenty of whole City shirts around, but no one bothering to mark, and that's the easiest to finishes. No more than they deserve, really, but that marking was awful there. Well, it's all smiles around the Vitality Stadium, and with good reason to. This has been a stunning performance of Bournemouth today. Five goals showing. And Hull, who in the first half got themselves level only for a matter of minutes, have now been swept aside in ruthless fashion. Could get better yet. Paul McClain here with a swagger. Wilkie. Here's Livermore. Keane has come off Sermon. Snodgrass set back for Huddleston. Well held there by Boric. He had Dean Mandy hoping to pass. A oh, good strike by Huddleston, but good hands as well by Boric. Gets it into his body here. Look, that's not easy on a greasy surface like today, but even when it's at the keeper, it's still good hands. becoming one of Bournemouth's best days since they found themselves as a top-flight team just over a year ago. Fans here in party mode, really enjoying what they've seen from their side here. And they'll have a corner, won by Kevin Wilson. Uh, they've got to be careful here, Hulk City, this doesn't end up six or seven, because that really would be a battering and a dent to the confidence. Well, they change here for Bournemouth. Benikafobi is the man who will be coming on to try and play his part, perhaps, in the goal-scoring act. Uh, Callum, Callum Wilson, Wilson going on. Sorry, Joe. Uh, Callum Wilson, I think, again, has been excellent. I see him recently here against Everton, and he gave Williams and Jaggy Elka a torrid time. If you're playing on your own up front, you've got to be willing to run those channels, and he does. They play blind balls around the corner. He's also good to his feet. This gives a phobia chance as well. Another strong running striker. You've got to have that pace up front. Here's the corner into walls of Phoebe. Trying to attack it with his first touch. King. Well, it's going to be some way for Eddie Howe to mark the fourth year anniversary of his second spell in charge of the Bournemouth boss. Now just three games short of 300 in charge of this club. And this will be one of the most special. A score by in which Asling Stan will be Bournemouth's biggest ever top flight win. And they spent a few quid down here, Joe, as well. You know, you think about the wages of Jack Wilshere and the likes of Bennett Gafobi and Callum Wilson and Lewis Graben, who's not in and around it at the moment. So a lot of money, especially spent in that striking area. Jordan Ive. Some real big money. A slip there by Livermore. It's in keeping with what's become a dreadful day for Harvey. It's a very long way back home. Journey of nearly 300 miles for their travelling contingent.
to be fair to them, not many of them have made for the exits here yet. A very patient support. It's been a tough time for Hull fans over the past few months. And this is a dark day in the South Coast for them. Daniels. It's Gosling! It gets better and better for Foreman. 6-1. An outstanding day for them. Their biggest ever top flight win by quite some distance. A day to savour for Bournemouth. What a nightmare for Hull City. Poor Mike Phelan, who's just been appointed manager, but Daniels comes in off the line. It's a great finish from Gosling, but look, no one's making a challenge. Not a challenge in sight, and Gosling, that's a good finish, sliding it home with his left foot, but this has really become a rout, and it could be even more if they're not careful, Hull City. Good finish, but all too easy. In what has been, what's been a very dominant form of side today, who's played some really good football. Fine finish by Dan Gosling. And we get more cause to cheer for the Bournemouth support here. Well, the Bournemouth players and fans don't want this game to end. They are in full flow. Harry Arter. I have to say now, Hull are falling apart. Steve Cook on defensive duty here, keeping his concentration late on. Well, it's really a dent in confidence for Hull, but what does it do for the confidence of Bournemouth? You said they've got some big games coming up, Spurs here on the horizon, but they're going to that with a little bit of confidence, and these are the games... Easy save for Boric, Easy, these are the games that they have to win, quite, quite honestly, and they've done so really convincingly today, but just tells me, plain and simple, that Hull have to go into the transfer market in January if they want to keep their Premier League status. Mike have done a really good job early on in the season, but when you simply haven't got the players, it comes home to roost at some stage, but it'll be a difficult job for him here with what he's got. You do worry for Hull City from here. But the only way is up for Bournemouth. Those have been coming from all angles for the Cherries today. Just entering stoppage time, which there'll be four minutes. Be time for a seventh. There are still some Bournemouth fans that will be pitching themselves. Klukas. Stayed away there by Smith. Klukas again. Snodgrass with the ball bit towards Diamandi. Here's Al Mohamedi. Maida. It's Diamandi with a header. And drifts away. And don't forget just what, six years or so ago. Bournemouth were in the bottom tier of English football. Now Eddie Howe, about to mastermind a 6-1 win in the Premier League. I bet he can barely believe it. Well, <laughs> it's not often that you get wins in the Premier League of this magnitude, even the top teams. But for a team like Bournemouth and where they've come from to win a game 6-1, five goal difference, uh, it's a, an incredible rise for them. And I just see them well, securing their Premier League status this season, they'll have their ups and downs because they give a team a chance with the way they play, like when they gave the ball away. But it is the way to play. Play out the back, pray through midfield, and then eventually into strikers. And they've got that little sprinkling of stardust now with Jack Wilshere, who hasn't really been their best player today. There's been three or four better than him. No problem, but it does give the others a little boost in confidence when they see a player like that come in, a top player like Jack Wilshere. And then all of a sudden, Bournemouth are signing players, you know, that are not in the top echelons. And you get one like that, albeit that he's had a little bit of a time at Arsenal. It's a real pick-me-up for these players. It's a victory for good football. Here's a phobic. He's still hungry for more here. That is a scoreline which I think Bournemouth fans 
will savour. Those who are here will remember this day for many, many years to come. Livermore looking for Will Keane. And Simon Francis still doing his job. I'll tell you what, this is a good centre-back. This is one of the few centre-backs in the Premier League that does his job, just no fuss. But when he's on the ball, he looks forward. I look at the centre-backs in the England setup now, no one looks forward. This boy does look forward and he's been coached to do so over the last few years. There's a late corner for Hull, picked away by Sermon. Uh, two Hull players there colliding. Lucas lining up for a volley, but mine, they got in the way. Stogress, Myler, it's comfortable for Boric, she opts to punch. Sorry to go on about the point, Joe, if we are asking our centre-backs to play football as well, like John Stones, who's a quality player, the other centre-back alongside him, maybe Gary Cahill or Smalling, have got to be able to play as well. They can't play football like Francis does here at Bournemouth, and because he plays for Bournemouth, he won't get a look in, probably. Be a brave man to put him in, but I'd sling him in, play some good stuff. Anyway, he's a man who began last year and much of the rise up the divisions playing at right back. It was only the injury to Tommy Elphick which saw Francis move to centre back where he's looked quite superb. Changed their season when he went to centre back last season and Smith came back in at right back for me. I think he's been their best player. And I know it seems strange to be saying it when the team's won 6 1. You may be, be talking about offensive players, but for me it starts at the back. He's a quality player, but the fact that he plays for a small club, inverted commas, like Bournemouth doesn't get a chance in the England setup, but you look what's in there and he's, he's quality. A very special day down on the south coast. Bournemouth's biggest ever win in the Premier League. They were simply magnificent. A painful day for Hull City, who were dispatched here in some style by a rampant Bournemouth. Callum Wilson, one of their goal scorers, as was Charlie Daniels, there were two for Junior Stanislas. Dan Goldstein got there sick late on as well. It was a match where Steve Cook scored two on his 200th game for the club. All smiles, applause all round for Bournemouth here at the Eddie Howe side. Bournemouth were absolutely superb. Hull were woeful. It's their fourth defeat in a row in the Premier League concerning signs for them. The final score here on the South Coast, Bournemouth 6, Hull City 1.